Hi everyone, hope you are doing well from wherever you are watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now, Moses Kuria had given farmers 72 hours to release their maize into the market, and if not, he had threatened to go ahead and uh, allow the importation of maize into this country. 72 hours ended yesterday, it was just three days. And after that, Kenyans expected to see Moses Kuria going forward eh, to do what he had said. Because even up to now, farmers have not yet released their maize into the market. But then the reason is that the maize is still in the farm. No logistic to maybe help in transportation. And again, farmers are just still in the process of harvesting the maize. So they need to dry their maize before they release it to the market. That is the reason why the maize is not yet supplied into the market up to now. The government has not facilitated. Number two, the process of harvesting still taking place. But then, after the cabinet meeting, which was chaired by President Ruto, they have resolved that they are extending the period up to next year February. That is the time when they will allow the importation of maize into this country. And this is what was shared by Sigdane. Maize importation will not start until February 2023 after the country's deficit is assessed. It means even if they have not yet accessed, assessed the deficit. Agatha C.S. Linturi says the ministry project importation of 10 million bags. That's what they are projecting, but they are not yet to understand what we have in the country. Senator Kiprotich Arapchara Gay also reacted, and this is what he said. Thank you, Your Excellency, His Excellency William Ruto and C.S. Mithika Linturi for listening to our main farmers for stoppage of importation of 10 million bags of duty-free maize until the end of February 2023 to allow local farmers to deliver their maize into NCPB and other stores. Kazi Nikat. So seemingly he is, he is now happy with the new move after the cabinet meeting. That's the position as of now. So, before I say anything, because there are a lot, to, a lot to say behind the reason by the government to move, to extend this period, there is a cartoon that was shared in the news, and I want us to talk about that cartoon, uh, because this is the real situation we are having in this country. Even if they are talking about extending the period to import the maize, we are all aware that the maize is in the country. <laughs> what we are not sure is if this maize is in the market. You can see in this cartoon, we have uh, a signpost, GMO, maize importation. And again, there is a danger signage, of course you can see, which has always been used in the, by the Kenya Power. And then we have someone with a glass, and uh, in a suit, a black suit, they write their cartels. And then something is saying, you have two options. I flood the market with my maize, or you sell me your maize at a throwaway price. Choose one. It's either you're selling your maize to the cartels on a throwaway price, or he flood the market with the importation. Opposite him, we are seeing someone with a folk jembe, of course, a farmer, and then so angrily and scared looking at the cartel. But again, beside him, there is organic Kenyan produce. You can see there is sacks of maize behind him, few sacks. But again, on the cartel side, you can see a lot of sacks of maize beside him. So many. The farmer has a little. And uh, 
Cartel side is GMO. Farmer side has organic maize. So the farmer has to hurry. The farmer has been harassed. So that is the situation. This is a clear picture of what is happening in this country. Moses Skuria is harassing the farmer so that the farmer will sell their product to cartels at a throwaway price. No wonder even the stores are yet to be open day for farmers to sell their product. NCPB is yet to open their stores. Their doors are still closed. So, where does Moses Kuria want the farmer to sell their maize? They are, he's telling the farmer to sell the maize direct to the millers. What price? How can the farmer negotiate for the guaranteed minimum return with the cartels or millers? The only person who will buy this maize, the way Moses Kuria was harassing, it is the cartels who again want to bring in the GM. So cartels want to control the price, but not the farmer on the ground. Because if the farmer will sell the product to NCPBB, then they will get a guaranteed minimum return, which will be favorable to the farmer. Of course, the government can buy at a higher price, but again, release the same product at a favorable price to the consumer. That means you are protecting all the people. Number one, the farmer is protected, and the consumer is protected. That is what this government does not want at all. So, the cartels are in between. They want to buy this maize. Maybe, because NCBB can buy this maize at maybe 6,000 or 5,500. And then they can release it in the market at 4,000. But again, if the cartels come in, they would want to buy this maize, let's say at 4,000 shillings per uh, a bank. And then, after that, they will bring in their GMO a little bit cheaper price and then the organic maize will be sold again by the same cartels at a very high price maybe they will put it at 7,000 or 6,000 per bag that is the real situation in this country so that's how I can explain this cartoon here real life or ground now besides this what is the reason why William Ruto and his cabinet have decided to uh, give more time to farmer to sell their produce before allowing the importation of GMO in this country. Few reasons, but if I'm going to be on that, just a quick request for those who are watching and not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Standing subscribers, thank you so much. And to all our viewers, please give this video a thumbs up. Thank you. And back to this discussion. Now, there has been a pressure from the farmer, they have been crying, and in the market, Kenyans are not comfortable with anything to do with GMO. So the pressure from the farmer has made William Ruto to give it more room. Again, the consumer is not comfortable with GMO. So they are taking more time to explain to the consumer even using fake formulas through the media and other platforms, how GMO is good, how it is the good side of GMO, the positive side, so that the consumer can buy into that decision and then accept GMO. So they are buying more time to allow the consumer to accept GMO food. That's why they're giving it up to 2023 February ending. So when 2023 will come here, you will be told, ah, GMO has been already in this country. You have been eating fruits from GMO. The chicken you have been eating is GMO. So many things. The fertilizers you have been using, some of them. Then the consumer will feel that already he has been feeding on GMO. So it will be easy for them to accept the GMO product and it will flood the market because that GMO will not be imported, it's already here. Ruto is buying time and again bowing down to pressure 
from the farmer. Number two or three. Raila Odinga had organized for massive public rallies and it was going to give him an opportunity to incite the electorate, incite Kenyans, incite the consumer against the GMO food. Inside the farmer against this government and already it is happening. So all this was going to make William Ruto unpopular in this country. People will view William Ruto and his cabinet as the enemy of the people. And that's exactly who he is. So because of this and the panic that Ruto has had as of now, due to all of this pressure, he has found in his own wisdom that it is unpopular to tell the farmer that you are giving him or her 72 hours to release product before you go to GMO. It's unpopular to sell a GMO as of now in this country. In as much there is scarcity of maize, it's unpopular. So he has decided to give it more room so that he buy more time to prepare on how he will have his way through the intelligence that he has collected. Because he was collecting also the intelligence across the country on which way to go with this thing. And the intelligence is telling him that you are walking on dangerous path, it is unpopular, people are not accepting it, and it might just land you in more problems. Just three months in power, and you become unpopular. That's why Ruto has said, no as of now. Already has been exposed as a leader who can easily expose Kenyans into danger because of the GMO product. So this has made Ruto to make a change of mind. And lastly, Ruto has been viewed as of now as a leader who seemingly he is working in the interest of the rich. Farmers, in fact, people went to court. <laughs> they were peers and farmers. Eh? So farmers are viewed as people who are down there, middle class, not even middle class, poor than. But if you talk about importation, the people who will be importing this maize are the cartels that we have explained there, the big boys in the business. So once you allow them, and the root has been viewed as one of them, is working in the interest but not the interests of farmer. That is also making him unpopular. So all of these things is making Ruto to be seen as a leader who cannot make a decision to protect Kenyans. Because of that, he has changed 